Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Jack, back again to talk about maybe a more controversial topic, but who gets the innervates and why? Now, uh, in many raid groups, of course, it's kind of a fight over, you know, should you give it to this person, or should you give it to this person? And the answer's not always set in stone. There's been some kind of calculations that have kind of floated around. Uh, there's been some people's guesstimations and things like that uh, through logs as well that have kind of tried to push more of an idea towards this person should get to innervate for XYZ reasons, right? So one of the biggest things that I've seen is a spreadsheet by Pearl from Arthas server. And it's a really nice representation, not entirely set in stone though, but because he gives very generous scenarios for specific specs. Uh, he covers all the specs and he covers as many of the possible buff combinations that for most of the specs that you can have. Uh, so it's very, very interesting in that aspect. And it gives approximate rankings based on total mana consumed as well as potential healing done. And I guess it's marked as like spell power because it's not based off of a specific item level. So the link will be down below. It'll be very interesting uh, to check out and stuff like that. But the approximate rankings and that he purports, he, he represents, is Discipline Priest at the top. And then from there, going into Rest of Druid slash Holy Priest, then Mistweaver, then Shaman, then with Holy Pally, right? So, it is pretty interesting if, and I think this lines up with what many people are thinking, uh, but it also depends on what scenario that you're looking at for each spec. You know, what are they casting? And you can even go and say, I don't think I'm a Holy Priest. I don't think my Guild's Druid is doing enough with the Innervate. You know, I don't think that they need the Innervate from our Boomkin because they're already getting an Innervate themselves. Well, you can go through the logs and you can see Okay, well, which of these scenarios that uh, Pearl's spreadsheet is mathing out? Well, which one are they using? Are they even using any of these spells? Are they always casting every single global during the Innervate? Things like that. That'll usually help you figure out how much mana are they saving and how much potential HPS are they gaining just by using an Innervate, getting that extra Innervate or something like that. So that's always a good way to do it uh, and like I said the link is below so you can check out the spreadsheet for yourself but I would actually partially disagree and I think Discipline Priest and Holy Priest are by far the best targets uh, just in general for the Innervates because of how well I mean obviously Discipline is just a shoe in right if you have a skilled Discipline Priest that is kicking ass you definitely want to give it to them if they are not a skilled player and they're really really falling behind then you should opt for the better player you should opt for the best player in your guild right but in a theoretical standpoint, you know, the Discipline Priest should be the one to get the Innervates because they can consume vast quantities of mana and pump out huge amounts of healing that is in a very uh, directed burst format. So, much like having, say, a Revival, which is excellent at getting people out of danger instantly, and it's very, very powerful in that aspect, well, you have that constantly with a Discipline Priest, where it's not quite absorbs, but it's reversing damage extremely fast. You don't get into scenarios where people are dropping too low, right? That at least is the idea, that at least is the hope. If you have that value, it's extremely, extremely good to be using on a Discipline Priest. However, uh, if you do not, you know, then you start going down the list, or then you go, start going and looking for who is the best player, who's the best skilled player, or something like that, who's going to make the most out of it themselves, right? So, Holy Priest, of course, this patch in particular is just so, so powerful using uh, Prayer of Healing. Uh, Prayer of Healing is just more powerful than ever. It's kind of a, a bludgeon that you just need to hit in the relative correct area when everyone's taking damage, and then you just do a ton of healing out of it, and a ton of healing after the fact, thanks to Echo of Light. So, that's extremely great as well. And one thing that the spreadsheet actually didn't cover was Power of the Naru buff, which is just a buff that Holy Priests get after they Sanctify. So he covers the Divinity buff, he covers Blessing of Ture being a potential buff, but there's not a cover for Power of the Naru, which makes me think that it might have been left out, so the potential for Holy Priest's healing from the spreadsheet could be much higher. So, But again, they're rough estimates, and I think it's a nice way of just kind of looking at what other people are casting in other scenarios that are kind of coming out of it. So... Holy Priest, just so far, I mean, because of how well we can pump out huge amounts of heals, and again, it's in a burst healing format, it's extremely, extremely powerful, and it gives you an immediate result and an immediate boost out of it, especially thanks to the fact that, well, Boomkin's Innervates are coming with a nice haste buff as well. So not only is it uh, extremely powerful, it's extremely rapid, and you're able to get out multiple Holy Words at the exact same time, which are quickly reversing damage. So... Both of those, my personal top two. Granted, I'm slightly biased, but take that into account. 
Now, looking at wisdoms, and I know wisdoms is also kind of connected to an innervate in many ways, or in the conversation. Well, wisdom follows the uh, is the same regen basically for every other person. You know, there's not uh, technically a oh, this person's going to save more, this person's going to regen more out of wisdom than this other spec. It's all going to be about the same. Uh, so looking at this, you're looking at who is going to consume the most mana over the course of the fight, not just in a specific window in time, but over the course of an encounter that will be needing three, four, five hundred k extra mana from a wisdom, or better yet, stacking them together because you want to pump all of your healing through one player, you know, something like that. For example, I was lucky enough on Croesus to be getting the wisdom because I was... I was doing the majority of the lion's share of the AoE healing while still providing, I think I was still second on tank healing because all of my serenities were getting dumped into the tanks every single time. Now my Holy Word Serenity, which is my single target nuke, that wasn't coming off cooldown very quickly because of the fact that I'm casting mainly AoE healing, but every single time that it did, it's resulting in more and more and more uh, single target healing just for the tanks. So by playing to just a vast mana consumption style for my priest, for example, I was very, very successful and it consumed all of my mana and then some, basically by using uh, one of my legendaries to proc my angel form, revive myself from, from my angel form thanks to the legendary cloak, and then use more mana after that, right? So that's one situation where you're squeezing every little possible trickle of value out of it and you're getting an extremely high results for it, you know? And you'll see on fights like Croesus, you're you're having people dump all of their resources basically into one healer who is basically carrying the other ones because they have so much potential with them. And in many cases, that's becoming very, very popular. Um, but it's also not a bad thing, I would say, if you're sharing innervates and stuff like that with the raid. It kind of just depends on the scenario of who is going to be making the most out of it and what is required for the raid. So, uh, like I said, Holy Priest for Croesus is extremely powerful because unlike Druids, you know, Holy Priest can rapidly reverse the damage. They don't have to worry about Haas. They don't have to worry about any of the kind of ticks to start taking effect. They can do it immediately, but they still do have the Haas to leave people more leveled off, you know, so it's kind of the best of both worlds. Uh, in many ways, you're kind of looking for what scenarios uh, are going to be bringing the most out of healers. I think Holy Priest in particular is an extremely good spot because it doesn't run into any kind of scenarios that it really struggles with, you know. But that's a topic for another video. Now, going back into Wisdoms, though, and how you can better argue for your own sake of why you should be getting a Wisdom or an Innervate or anything like that, is looking at your other healers and looking at not only how effective their healing is, just from a general standpoint, how effective are they at healing priority targets, but also what's their mana consumption over the course of a fight. If you have people who are getting an Innervate, getting a Wisdom, but they're finishing encounters with 15-20% mana, well, they've effectively wasted the entire buff, and it's helped nobody over the course of this fight. Because if you're finishing with mana left on the table, you're leaving HPS left on the table, and that doesn't benefit anybody. So, if you're seeing that, that would be one thing, that would be a feather in your cap to say, if you're not consuming the benefit of your Wisdom, you might as well give it to me, because I sure as hell will, right? Now, if we're comparing Innervates, for example, to the spreadsheet of Pearls, one thing that you can be looking at yourself is saying, okay, well, in this scenario that Pearl represents, let's say this is the lowest HPS um, rotation, I guess you could say, in Pearl's spreadsheet. This is doing the least amount, and this is what I would be doing if I had an Innervate, for example, right? I would be casting all these Prayer of Healings and Sanctifies and stuff like that, right? Well, you start looking through the logs and you start saying, okay, are they just doing filler, or are they just doing, you know, things that are not achieving much value to them? I know it's it's unlikely that you're ever going to be getting a scenario where they're going to be uh, point for point, cast for cast, doing everything that they want to do uh, for the theoretical maximum. I know that's not always going to be the case, but if you're seeing a you know continuing trend where people are just not really getting the most out of it, or you're looking at the window of time when they're using their innervates and they're not getting much out of it at all, where they're saying, okay, they're not doing any kind of healing at all with this, why are they getting this benefit? The whole point of getting Innervate is going to be consuming the maximum amount of mana possible while also doing the most healing possible in a very specific window in time that will be benefiting the entire raid, right? Croesus is just a great bread and butter example of saying, I need this boost at a specific point in time because this specific point in time will benefit the raid the most and it'll just increase my healing and it'll increase the healing of the entire raid group or something like that, you know? It'll increase the health pool of the entire raid group, it'll benefit everybody 
we should use it here. If you're looking for the argument where you're saying, I am the best target for Renovate, this is why you should take me, generally you can go off the priority and you can look at Pearl's spreadsheet, but you can also be looking at who is consuming the most mana, what are they casting during the duration of an Renovate if they are getting it and you are not, and also looking at the effectiveness of their healing. You know, if you're if you're giving an Innervate, for example, to somebody who is just, you know, AoE heal AoE spam healing the raid or something like that, if you give it to a holy priest, for example, that is just post spamming the entire time. Meanwhile, you're on Tychondrius and you have priority targets that are dying to carrying plague, well you probably shouldn't be giving it to them because they're not doing their job, right? And I think that goes you know, especially for me, from my perspective, where I'm going over the boss fight videos, and I'm saying, this is the part where I'm single target, this is the part where I get the AoE, you know. AoE healing is all well and good until the priority targets are dying, until the tanks are dying, until, you know, soaker targets are dying, right? So not only is it about raw throughput, but it's also about doing your job and keeping everybody alive through that. I hope some of these arguments help you out, and... Maybe they'll get you the innovate of the wisdom in the raid that you would very much like. Again, if you have the option of only getting a wisdom or an innovate, I would definitely go for the innovate itself. But if you can get both, I can tell you firsthand that it feels amazing. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, stuff like that. Any ideas that you have for future videos, definitely leave me a note in the comments below. Also join the Discord. Link is in the description below as well. And I'll catch you all next time.